Traders, FS Pepcolette here. Today is Saturday, June 15th, and I'm going to be analyzing every single thing on this list from the S&P 500 all the way up to the euro dollar. And I will just be looking at the daily time frame, which for me, the daily time is the roadmap time frame that helps me trade all the sort of time frames. Just like if you were in a city that you've never been to, as long as you have a roadmap, which for me, the roadmap is the daily to weekly time frame, then you pretty much should know exactly what to do on the sort of time frames. So before we get started, I just want to remind everybody that every single thing on this list right here from top to bottom, these are the pairs that I do analyze on a daily basis for my premium members. And these are also the pairs that I do look for trade setups on. I am definitely a swing trader, but I do look for setups on every single one of these pairs. I think we have a total of about 42 some odd pairs that we actually scan every single day for potential swing trade setups. If anybody is interested in joining my membership, it is fxpipcollector.com. Com. You do get a lot for your money. It is only $30 a month, which I still think is extremely, extremely cheap. It comes with these Zoom meetings that I do every single day where we scan through those pairs looking for setups every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I do a 90-minute meeting starting at 8 a.m. UK time. And every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I do a 90-minute meeting to two-hour meeting starting at 1 p.m. UK time. And these New York session meetings are almost always doing the dollar news, which is why I did it at that time. So often we are watching the US news coming out together and entering trades together. And uh, meetings are definitely more focused on teaching, analyzing, and looking for setups. But when we do see a setup, I take it together with the group. That's why I like to call it learn and earn at the same time because hopefully while you're learning to trade by following along with my trading course, by participating in my live Zoom meetings, hopefully you can also be earning while you're learning by following along with my swing trade setups. Now I am a swing trader. I'm definitely never going to be fine. You're never going to find me on the one minute, five minute, 15 minute, or even really 30 minute time frame looking for setups. But I do much, much prefer to swing trading. And honestly, if you have a full time job, you have responsibilities. I really think that pretty much the majority of traders should be swing trading. Um, scalping is really not possible if you have a full time job and you have a lot of responsibilities. So anyway, definitely check it out it's only 30 dollars a month you can cancel at any time and also this is my discord channel right here these are the swing trade setups that i provided with the group last week if you want you can pause the video kind of go through and scan some of these check them out for yourself definitely the majority of them are winning trades we had a couple pretty decent winners this week so, like I said, if you want, pause the video, check it out. These are the swing trades that I provided with the group at the time of entry with the stop loss. And even if you do not want to join my membership, you can definitely join my free Discord channel. This is the free channel right here, 100% free to join. I also will be doing a giveaway that will be ending on February, uh, sorry, February, June 5th, uh, 28th. So two Fridays from now, I will be giving away 100 USDT or $100 to a lucky member of my Discord. It doesn't matter if you're a free member or a paying member. Everybody, everybody's going to have an equal chance of winning. All you have to do is join my free Discord group, which currently has 5,179 members. Go to the Welcome tab, and then go to the Giveaway tab, and then click on this little emoji right here. Once you do all that, you will be entered for a chance to win $100 for doing absolutely nothing but being a part of a like-minded community. So the giveaway will be ending at 526 during my live stream on June 28th, my YouTube live stream. I will be announcing the giveaway for the 100 USDT. So like I said, if you're not interested in my membership, which I definitely think you will be very satisfied if you do join, then definitely, definitely check out my free Discord channel. The link for the channel, both of those are in the description of the video and on the screen. This right here is my Discord channel, 100% free to join. And then down here is my website, which is fxpipcloud.com, which is only $30 a month. And you get access to my daily live Zoom meetings and all my swing trade setups. 
So, in a ways, let's start off by uh, the S&P 500. I do also analyze all these indices that you see down here also, but we're not going to look at all those today. Um, I do scan these for entries too, and I've actually been doing very good with these indices. So, we're going to start off with the S&P 500, work our way all the way up to the yield dollar on the daily time frame, which for me is the roadmap time frame that helps me to make decisions on what to do on the much shorter time frames looking for entries. So the S&P 500 definitely does look like a wave 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it does look like a wave 5. We are approaching a Fibonacci level, and then we have a couple more Fibonacci levels up here. But with the indices especially, just because you see five waves does not mean this thing is just automatically going to turn down. The market light does like to turn out the five waves, but it seems to me like these indices like to make way more than five waves. I mean, look at this trend back here. This is like a 9 or 11 wave trend. So just because you see five ways does not mean the trend is over. I mean, this easily could continue to make higher highs, higher lows until I see a reason to believe this is going down like a significant break of structure or a lower high. I definitely, definitely would be looking for longs on shorter time frames. So they could taking a look at Bitcoin. I was actually originally thinking that Bitcoin was like a one, two, three of four, like ABC of four, that it was going to go back up for a wave five. But it seems like this correction is stretching out way too much to be like a wave four. So probably it is a one, two, three, four, and it's probably already made a wave five. And we do have a little bit of a break of structure. So I would definitely be watching these Fib levels for a bounce. If you do get a good bounce, you could definitely go long again. But with this safe that we got here with this fact that it's trying to break structure i think you might want to look for sorts i honestly think that it actually could go down and take out the low of wave four either making a wave a or possibly making a wave one so moving on to natural gas when like i said every single thing on this list right here we scan every single day for entries swing trade entries so natural gas, my overall target is that I definitely think it's going to end up taking out these highs. Now it does look like one, two, three, four, five, but like always, just because I see five ways definitely does not mean that the trend is automatically over. What's going to tell me this trend is over is a break of structure or a very significant lower high, which we definitely do not have either of those. I got my Fibonacci retracement on here. I personally would be looking for three-way pullbacks, just like this right here, one, two, three, probably down to at least a 50 to 61.8. If I get a three-way pullback, if I get a bounce that is exactly what i would be looking for for an entry to go long for the continuation of the uptrend and oil oil is a little bit of a critical area for me right now i guess you could say because if this does form an end of a trend by breaking structure then that's going to tell me that we're probably going up for a way b which will probably put us all the way up to the hundred dollars if it does not break structure and make some sort of a rejection you know like bouncing out to 78 making a break of structure then i would definitely continue to look for sorts i would think that this would go down and take out the low of wave a before it actually went up and made the way b but you do get higher high wave C's all the time. So if you do get a break of structure, then you definitely want to be looking for longs overall because at that point, it's probably going up to at least the $100 a bail. If it doesn't break structure, if it bounces from a fib level, you should probably continue to look for sorts. Now, silver and gold are definitely very correlated. I still really believe that gold silver is heading up to around $36 an ounce. And we are kind of respecting a fib level right now. So if it does go up, if it does break structure, that's pretty much going to confirm the end of a correction and probably the continuation of the uptrend heading up towards that $36 range. So I'm definitely waiting for confirmation that this really is the end of a correction and that we really are back into an uptrend. So looking at gold, gold has been very, very sideways for many, many, many weeks now. I mean, on the daily time frame, this is pretty much just one big range right here. I still think that, I mean, I have a few possibilities. I mean, this could be a 1, 2, 3 of a downtrend like this. It's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of C. Maybe go down to the 161, 178 before it continues the uptrend. Possibility number two is that this is a trend right here, and this is an ABC to that trend, and it's going to make a higher low, higher low, and just keep on going up, which is this right here is definitely the scenario that I'm leaning towards, just because I think we're in a wave three on the weekly and the monthly, and my target for gold is still the $2,500 2550 area for this wave three and wave threes are supposed to be the biggest strongest waves of a trend and if we're really in a wave three on the weekly and monthly then it's probably more likely that this will make a higher low and it probably will just keep on trending up
But keep an eye on it, especially keep an eye on your Fibonacci retracements. I mean, if it makes three waves up on the shorter time frames, makes it positive down, then you should probably go short. Definitely a possibility that it makes its way down to one of these lower Fibonacci, the 161, 178, before it actually does continue the uptrend. Moving on to the Kiwi Swiss. Now, when it comes to all the Swiss pairs, I do suspect that this actually could be a correction to this last move up. I got my Fibonacci retracement out here. I would have to see a pretty significant turn at a Fibonacci level to believe this is over. But if we do see a very significant turn, especially if we get a break of structure, then I definitely think we need to start looking for longs again. As of right now, this little teeny rejection of the FID level that we currently have does not prove to me that it's going back up. I think we need to continue to look for sorts. I mean, there's always a possibility it keeps on going down. The market will definitely prove to us when it's turning back up by breaking structure or making a very significant higher low. So until that happens, continue to look for sorts in a downtrend. The Kiwi CAD also has a pretty significant looking turn. I mean, it definitely, definitely does look like a 345. And if it is a 345, then it definitely will go take out the low wave four. But for me, the trend is never over until it's confirmed to be over. I've seen this picture so many times that I'm like, ooh, that's a wave five. It's going to go down break structure. But then in reality, what ends up happening is it makes a higher low, higher low, and just keeps on trending up. The market will tell you when these trends are over if you know how to read the market and you know how to read the way the subdivision on multiple time frames. This right here, this little rejection, this little 3, 4, 5 state does not tell me it's over. So if you do put your Fibonacci retracement from here to here, you watch it on like the 4 to 2 hour time frame, you see a rejection, you should continue to look for longs in an uptrend at least until we have a break of structure to the downside on the daily time frame, which we definitely do not have yet. Now, like I was saying, a lot of these Swiss pairs to me look like they could be an ABC crutch and like three waves down for A, three waves up for B, five waves down for C. We are at a Fibonacci retracement. We are at a Fibonacci extension. If it turns up, if it breaks structure, that's going to prove that the wave C is over and it's going to prove that we're back into the uptrend. If it does not break structure, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to look for three-way pullbacks on sort of time frames until we have evidence on these higher roadmap time frames that the trend is actually over. The Kiwi, the Aussie Kiwi, I am definitely still bearish on. I think this is possibly the end of a wave C on like the weekly monthly time frame. If it is, then most likely it will make a lower high. Most likely it will bounce off a of Fibonacci level after making three waves. And most likely it will continue the downtrend. So I'm definitely looking for three wave pullbacks on sort of time frames. I'm looking for Fibonacci bounces to go sort for the continuation of the downtrend. This is just something that I'm definitely keeping a pretty close eye on next week. So the Aussie Swiss, just like the other Swiss pairs, I actually suspect that this could be like either a running flat or an expanding flat. I think it's more likely a running flat. I think this is a nice and positive down. One, two, three up. One, two, three, four, five down. So if we do get a nice and positive move up, if we do get a break of structure, that's what's going to prove that this is the end of a correction, end of a running flat wave C, and continuation of the uptrend. Until that actually happens, I mean, we don't know that it's going to turn now. It could go down to the 100%, or it could even turn into an expanding flat, which would bring it all the way down to the 161, 178. The trend is not over until the market tells you the trend is over, so you should be trading with the trend, because the trend is your friend, until the trend is over. If it turns up now I'll stop looking I will start looking for longs if not I will definitely continue to look for sorts in a downtrend Aussie CAD, just like the other CAD pairs, I mean, it definitely looks like it could break structure. It definitely looks like that 3, 4, 5 shape that you see often at the end of trends. But as I always say, the trend is not over until the market proves to me that it's over. It looks like it wants to go down. It looks like it wants to break structure. But until it actually does do that, I am bullish. And I would be looking for longs and sort of time frames. I would put my Fibonacci retracement on this push right here. Watch it on the sort of time frames. Look for a three-way pullback. Look for a bounce. Look for an impulsive move up to go long. Otherwise, if it keeps on drifting down and it does break structure, that's what's going to turn me into a seller. So moving on to the pound kiwi, I was thinking, looking at the pound kiwi, I was kind of wondering if this was actually making like some sort of an ABC crutch and like a wave two or something. I mean, it definitely kind of looks like it should go up again. And I do kind of suspect that the pound Aussie should go up again too. But I mean, if really it's making lower lows lower highs so i mean really technically you should probably be looking for sorts but if you see a good fibonacci bounce on the sort of time frames like the four to one hour time frame you see a nice impulsive move up at a fibonacci level i would definitely go long because i do suspect that this could go up maybe making a crutch into this move down or possibly it is an expanding flat like we think that the pound aussie and the yo aussie yo kiwi could be 
pound Aussie. This is a trade I've been in for about five weeks now. I'm in about four times. I got in way down here, and I said this entry with the group at the time of entry. I got in again right here, and I got in here, and I'm in, and I got a total of four orders on this thing. I'm thinking that we're going to go up here, and I'm looking to get in at least one or two more times on the way up. I'm hoping that this turns into a nice uptrend, and that if that turns into an uptrend, the pound kiwi, and maybe even the yo kiwi, yo Aussie also could do the same. So I'm definitely looking for longs. I'm already long four times. I'm looking for pullback entries. I'm looking for Fibonacci bounces to go long again for the continuation of the uptrend. And the pound Swiss, just like the other Swiss pairs, I'm definitely looking at this as possibly being, you know, impulsive down, three waves up. And the part that really gives it away for me is the one, two, three waves up, which is what I think is either a running flat or an expanding flat wave B. And if we get a nice Fibonacci bounce, we get a nice impulsive turn up, I definitely would take it as a long. Until that actually happens, I am looking for shorts because it could go down to the 161, 178 and turn into an expanding flat. But it could end up being a running flat and a running flat would make a higher low, higher low and turn back up. The market will 100% tell us when this trend is over and when it does tell us this trend is over, then we will stop looking for shorts and start looking for longs again. Moving on to the pound CAD, yeah, a lot of these CAD pairs do look like they are trying to turn one, two, three, four, five waves up. We got a nice significant Fibonacci bounce that tells us that this could go down. It could break structure. It could even turn into a significant downtrend if it really is like a, you know, like a flat pattern that it's forming on like the weekly time frame. But just like I always say, until it actually goes down and breaks structure, I'm definitely bullish. I'm definitely looking at this move uh, down as possibly a crescent to this last move up. I would be watching the Fibonacci levels. If it does make a significant bounce on a Fib level, I definitely would continue to go long. If it doesn't make a bounce at a significant Fib level, but instead goes down and keeps making lower lows, lower highs, and eventually breaks structure, that is what's going to turn me into a seller on shorter time frames. Moving on to the Yo Kiwi, yeah, I mean, the Yo, Yo Kiwi is really, the, all the Yo pairs have been extremely, extremely weak ever since we had that election last week in, in Europe. And really, this one looks like it's already over. I mean, this looks like a downtrend. I honestly think it's more likely this is going to keep on trending down. I mean, if it does turn up, if it does break structure, then okay, start looking for longs. But this is a very, very strong downtrend. I 100% would be doing nothing but looking for shorts on shorter time frames. The Yo Aussie, the Yo Aussie is the one that's more convincing that this could be a flat. It kind of looks like impulsive down, one, two, three up, and then it looks like one, two, three, four, five down. We are at the 178% Fibonacci extension, which is right where a way B of an expanding or a running flat would go. So if it does turn up, if it does respect this 178, if it does go break structure, then 100% start looking for longs because at that point it's probably going to go all the way up there and make a wave C. Otherwise, I would continue to look for sorts even though it does look like it could be a way B expanding flat. It easily, easily could just keep going down. I always trade with the trend until the trend tells me otherwise and the trend has definitely not told me otherwise yet. The Yo Pound, we are sitting right at the 100% Fib level, and the Yo Pound does have a little bit of a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 save, so if it does go up and if it start, does start breaking some structure, definitely start looking for longs because it does look like a 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 way pattern. If it is a 5 way pattern, then it would likely go up and take out the high of wave 4 minimum. But, just like everything else, until it actually starts breaking some significant structure on my roadmap timeframes, I am definitely looking for sorts. There's no reason to say that this potentially might not just keep on trending down. I always, I mean, I know this sounds like a cliche thing that some trader from the 80s would say, but the trend is your friend. And you make way more money if you trade with the trend until the trend proves otherwise. Man, the Yo Swiss, the Yo has been so weak. Now, if this really is an expanding flat, which I think it does look like it, then this would be one, two, three waves up, and then it would go down all the way to the 161, 178 Fibonacci extension. So if this goes down to that 161, 178, makes a nice bounce, makes a break of structure, then that's what's going to stop me from looking for sells, and that's what's going to stop me looking for buys again. Until we actually see this picture right here with a nice Fibonacci bounce, with a nice break of structure to the upside, I'm definitely looking for sorts on sort of time faves. I really do not think this is over. I think it needs to at least minimum go down to the 161 or the 178. 
So, moving on to the Yo CAD. They, like I said, the Yo has been just so weak this week, it's unreal. We definitely got a break of starts on the Yo CAD. I mean, it definitely does look like one, two, three waves up. It definitely bounced from the 78%. I mean, as of right now, it looks like a one, two, three. So, I mean, definitely, definitely looking for sorts. With the three waves up, Fibonacci bounce, break of Strotzer, it probably is going to go down and take out the previous lows at this point. So, the yen pairs. I do kind of run through the yen pairs really fast because for me, the yen pairs are pretty much all extremely, extremely correlated. And I'm basically doing the exact same thing on every single yen pair that I've been doing for pretty much years now. All you really have to do is zoom out on the four hour daily time frame and you'll understand why I do absolutely nothing on every single yen pair except for look for longs at the end of pullbacks. I wouldn't even dream about going short on the yen pairs. I mean, this is at least a four year up trend how much money would you have made if you would have done nothing but look for longs for the past four years on the yen pairs you would probably have so much money in your trading account that you would probably about own your own island by now or definitely a couple man cents at least i am definitely doing absolutely nothing by going long at the end of every one two three pullback that i see on every single yen pair so i don't really spend a whole lot of time actually analyzing the yen pairs because for me it's simple Every time it goes down, I do not go short. Every time it goes down, I think to myself, this is awesome. I'm going to go long again at the end of this pullback on every single yen pair. That's pretty much the only strategy I have been doing for pretty much years now. This is a four-year uptrend on the yen pairs, and it could easily turn into a five-year, six-year uptrend. The trend is your friend. I would be doing nothing on every single yen pair except for looking for longs at the end of three-way pullbacks. So like I said, I do kind of skip through the yen pairs kind of fast because for me, the strategy is so unbelievably simple. I look for one, two, three-way pullbacks, 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 one, two, three-way pullbacks. What am I doing right now? I'm ignoring all sorts, not even thinking about going short. I'm looking for three-way pullbacks to go long for the continuation of the uptrend. It doesn't have to make a pullback now. I mean, it could keep drifting up, but if it does make a pullback, I will be ready to go, just like I have been pretty much for the last four years. The yo yen. Look at this, one, two, three ways down. Hmm, man, if that goes up, just like all these other one, two, three pullbacks that we've seen pretty much for years now, like I said, all you have to do is zoom out on the daily time frame and a four hour time frame, and you'll see why going pretty much since early 2000, really on this one, it's like 2012, but definitely since early 2000, why it's been so important to do absolutely nothing but look for longs at the end of pullbacks on every single yen pair, including the dollar yen. I always, always consider the dollar yen more of a yen pair than a dollar pair. I am 100% doing nothing on the dollar yen except for looking for longs on pullbacks. So the yen pairs are extremely simple for me. Go long every time it goes down. So just like the other Swiss pairs, I do kind of suspect that this possibly could be some sort of an ABC Kretzen. So if it does break Strutzer to the upside, I would turn back into a buyer and I would start looking for longs again. But I actually, on the weekly, monthly time frame, we came up with a, an ABC, like a big old expanding ABC Kretzen on the weekly. And if that's true, then this potentially could just keep on going down. And I, even though the dollar is kind of going up pretty strong right now, I am definitely very, very bullish uh, very, very bearish, that is, on the dollar. So I honestly wouldn't be surprised if this thing just kept on going. And so unless it does break shorts up to the upside, I enjoyed nothing on this, except for looking for long sorts, looking for sorts on sort of time frames. Moving on to the dollar CAD. Just like I've been saying for a while, I still suspect that this is all one big crutch, and I still suspect that we might already have a high. We already got a fib bounce. I still kind of suspect that this could turn into a wave three. One, two, and wave three. Definitely no reason to not believe that as of yet. I mean, technically on the daily time frame, the trend is up because we don't really have a break of Strutzer, but if this move up that we currently got on Friday does make a very significant lower high and start to turn down, I would definitely change it up, and I would definitely start looking for sorts. Probably would be the beginning of a big giant wave three. So moving on to the Kiwi, uh, the other dollar pairs, like I said, just to remind you, definitely, definitely make sure that you do join my free Discord channel. The link to join is up here, but it's also in the description of the video. 
Also, uh, I will be doing a 100 USDT giveaway on June 28th to one of my members. It doesn't matter if you're a free member or a paying member. Everybody will have an equal chance of winning. And also check out my website right here. I do share every single swing trade I take with my members at the time of entry. And I also do a, a daily Zoom meeting for the New York and the London session where we scan through every single pair on this list looking for entries. So I personally still, to this day, think that this is a wave two. That my mind has definitely not changed on any of these, except for maybe the yellow dollar because the yellow has been so weak. But I definitely think this is a one. This is a two. Now maybe it'll go down, break structure. If it does, that's still not going to change anything. It's probably just a one of three, a two of three, and then eventually it'll go up for a three of three. But just like always, there's no break of structure to the downside. There's no low. There's no lower high. The trend is 100% still up on the daily time frame. I would put my Fibonacci retracement on this last push up. I'd be looking for a Fibonacci bounce. I would still be looking for entries to go long. If this really is a wave three, which I believe it is, wave threes are supposed to be the biggest, strongest waves of a trend. You're going to see a lot of times if this really is a wave three where you're like, ooh, that looks like it's going to go down. But instead, it makes a higher low, higher low, and just keeps on making those higher highs, higher lows on the daily, weekly time frame. Until the daily, or at least the weekly, tell me otherwise, I am doing nothing but looking for longs on pullbacks on shorter time frames. Moving on to the Aussie dollar, I mean, uh, to me, it still looks like a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I still think it's a 1 of 3. I still think this is probably all a 2 of 3. Maybe it will break structure, maybe go down to a lower FIB level. It does kind of seem like it should take out the lower wave 4, so I wouldn't be surprised if it did go down to the 50% before it actually did end up going back up for a wave 3. But it really doesn't have to do that, especially because I think this is a wave 3 on the weekly and monthly. It could literally make a higher low and just keep on trending up. So definitely, definitely watch those Fibonacci levels on sort of time frames. I am definitely still looking for buys primarily. Now the pound dollar is trying to break structure. It definitely has kind of rejecting structure so far, but the pound dollar out of all the dollar pairs does kind of have that one, two, three, four, and five shape and then impulse it down. We may actually be in a wave A of wave two and this may go up, but it might be a wave B and then it might go down later on for a wave C and then continue the uptrend. Just like all the other dollar pairs, I think this wave five is a wave one. I think this is a big WXY of wave two. I think we're in a wave three. Now, even if it does go down, that's not gonna change anything. It's probably just a one of three, a two of three, and a wave three of three. But if this reject structure turns back up, I definitely am going to go long because the trend is definitely still up at it easily, especially because we're in the wave three, most likely on the weekly. It could very, very, very easily just continue to make higher highs, higher lows. You have to remember that the trend is your friend. So moving on to the yo dollar, man, the yo has been so unbelievably weak this week. It's kind of unreal. We are already all the way down to the 78% Fibonacci retracement. And honestly, I mean, the way the yo is looking, I honestly wouldn't be surprised at all if this went down a little bit. I mean, I do have an alternative count on this yo, which is this is a wave five ways down for wave A. This is like one, two, three of A. This is one, two, three down for B. This is one, two, three, four, five of C. And this would be a running flat, like an A, B, C. So A, A, B, C, a B. And now, potentially, we are in a wave C, which would go down and take out the previous lows before it actually continued the uptrend. I'm actually starting to think, looking at all the euro pairs, that this might be the more likely scenario, that it takes out the previous lows, makes an A, makes an A, B, C, a B, then goes down for a C, then breaks structure and continues the uptrend. Like I said, the yo is just so weak, I have a hard time believing that it's going to turn up now. But if it, we are at the 78%, if it does start making like higher highs, higher lows on the 4-hour time frame, or better yet, if it like turns into a complete spike reversal on the daily and starts breaking structure, I definitely would still take it as a wave 1, a wave 2, and potentially go up for a big old giant wave 3. We haven't broken structure down yet, but honestly, I feel like it's probably a pretty good possibility because of how weak the yo is right now, ever since the election that we had last week, the parliament election in Europe. I wouldn't be surprised if this is actually, like I just showed you, a wave A, a running flat wave B, and now we're actually in a wave C, which will potentially take out the low of this before it actually continues the uptrend. So I would be very cautious about going long on the yo. I know of most people that love the yo dollar, including myself. It's probably one of my favorite pairs. 
All the other dollar pairs do look like they could make a higher low, but honestly, the yo does kind of look to me like it definitely could keep going down, and I definitely would be looking for sorts unless I saw very, very good evidence on the sort of time frames that this really is the end of a Kretzen. Which, if you know how, you can definitely identify the end of a Kretzen, and you can know when this thing is over. So, anyways, I hope everybody enjoys the rest of the weekend, and I hope everybody the best of luck starting next week. Just remember that the trend is your friend. That's one of the key phrases that I really like to say. I know it sounds like something you would hear out of an 80s trading book, but there's a reason why these things have lasted, you know, time, 40 years, because it works. The trend is your friend. You make way more money when you trade with the trend. So anyways, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and the best of luck to you next week, and as always, happy trading, and good luck to everyone.